Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, kia ora and welcome to another version of We Are One. I uh, welcome all the listeners and viewers from the Wairarapa region. Also, I am anticipating we may have uh, some guests from Australia watching us today as well, which is quite pleasing. I wouldn't really say guests, but I would say viewers from Australia uh, will be watching us today. But as per the tradition of the um, Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat or the Muslims, we start our program with the recitation of the Holy Quran, and then I will give you the details of the program uh, later in the show. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim كَرَّسُلُ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْدَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْدٍ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ كَلَّمَ اللَّهُ وَرَفَعَ بَعْدَهُمْ دَرَجَاتٍ وَآتَيْنَا عِيسَى ابْنَ مَرْيَمَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ These messengers have we exalted, some of them above others. Among them there are those to whom Allah spoke, and some of them he exalted by degrees of rank. And we gave Jesus, son of Mary, clear proofs and strengthened him and strengthened him with the spirit of holiness today's the day i made 200,000 pounds on the british pound against the us dollar possibly one of the most quintessential <laughs> And if Allah had so willed, those that came after them would not have fought with one another after clear signs had come to them, but they did disagree. Of them were some who believed, and of them were some who disbelieved. And if Allah had so willed, they would not have fought with one another. But Allah does what He desires. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu anfiqu min ma razaqnaakum min qabli ayyatiya yawm ayyatiya yawmun la bay'un فِيهِ وَلَا خُلَّةٌ وَلَا شَفَاعٌ وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ O ye who believe, 
spend out of what we have bestowed on you. Before the day comes, wherein there shall be no buying and selling, nor friendship, nor intercession, and it is those who disbelieve that do wrong to themselves. Allah la ilaha illa hu al hayyu al qayyum la ta'khudhu sinatun wa la naum lahu السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self-subsisting, and all-sustaining. Slumber seizes Him not, nor sleep. To Him belongs whatsoever is in the heavens, and whatsoever is in the earth. Who is He that will intercede with Him, except by His permission? ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم. He knows what is before them and what is behind them, and they encompass nothing of his knowledge except what he pleases. His knowledge extends over the heavens and the earth, and the care of them burdens him not, and he is the high, the great. La Zakallah for our listeners and viewers, that was the beautiful um, recitation of the Holy Quran. Um, today's session is quite interesting. We thought we will touch on some exciting stuff today on the Holy Book of uh, Muslims, that's the Holy Quran. I do have a little bit of excerpt that I want to read from our website alislam.org that talks about uh, what is the Quran, some really basic knowledge about the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran is a compilation of the verbal res revelations given to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, over a period of 23 years. The Holy Quran is the holy book of scriptures of Muslims. It lays down for them the law and commandments codes for their social and moral behavior, and contains a comprehensive religious philosophy, the language of the Quran is in Arabic. Besides its proper name, Quran is also known by the following names, Kitab, the book, Al-Furqan, the discrimination, Al-Dhikr, the exposition, Al-Bayan, the explanation, Al-Buran, the argument, Al-Haq, the truth, Al-Tanzil, the revelation, Al-Hikmat, the wisdom. Al-Huda, the guide, Al-Hukum, the judgment, Al-Muayziz, the admonition, Al-Rahmat, the mercy, Al-Nur, the light, Al-Ruh, the word. So these are some amazing names that has been given um, to the Holy Quran, the book and the scriptures that was verbally given to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. So we have listened to the Holy Quran. We have got a session also today. We have a guest in our studio here today as well. We've got Mirza Kawim Saab. Uh, we will uh, say assalamu alaikum to him a little bit later in the program. Uh, we do have an interactive session, but let's listen to this um, beautiful um, understanding of the Holy Quran that I will play a short video on. Oh, 
के यही नूर खुदा पाओगे अस्सलाम वालेकुम वरहमतुल्लाहि व बरकातहू वेलकम टू आवर प्रोग्राम एसेंस ऑफ इस्लाम If we look at our society today we see that many people are moving away from religion atheism is on the rise and islam unfortunately is no exception many muslims they do not understand the teachings of islam especially the youth they do not understand the importance of those teachings they do not understand how they can apply those teachings in their lives fortunately we are that community who has accepted the messiah of the age he wrote many books over 80 books explaining the essence of those teachings of Islam they have been put together in a volume five volume series is called essence of Islam whichever teaching of Islam we do not understand we can pick up any volume and try to understand through the writings of the promised messiah alayhi salatu wasalam what that teaching actually means and how we can apply that in our lives today we are going to speak about the holy quran In the studio, I have with me Hanan Sobi Sahab and Asif Khan Sahab. Jazakallah for joining us. Uh, welcome to our program. So, Asif Sahab, uh, let's start with you. That when we are talking about the Holy Quran, we say all the religions they have a holy scripture. So, what is different between the scripture of the Muslims, the Holy Quran, and the other scriptures that other religions have to offer? Essentially, what is the Holy Quran? Yes. So, in regards to the question, the most unique aspect of the Holy Quran is that it is the revealed word of God, verbatim. letter for letter word for word now this is something which is very unique when it comes to religious scriptures this is a, th- these are the words which were revealed to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from allah taala himself so we have to remember that these aren't stories that were made up by followers who came, who appeared later on or even followers of that same time they're not even the words of the prophet the founder of islam rather they're the exact words of god Yeah and I think uh, this point you know sometimes it's a small statement but it's overlooked that the rest of the scriptures uh, they are inspired scriptures yeah. you know they are scriptures that okay the prophet wrote but they include the words of the prophet they're not verbatim as you mentioned that they're not word for word uh their revelation of god almighty in that sense as you mentioned the holy quran definitely is unique but hanan sobi sahab you know as asif sahab mentioned that this is the revelation of god almighty and we know from history that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't know how to read and write so if he was receiving that revelation one might ask that this man the prophet of islam the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he himself didn't know how to read and write So that revelation when he received how did that get transformed into a you know a book format which we have today how was the holy quran compiled um the holy quran we have to understand it wasn't sent down all together uh, you know in one book form it was sent down in piecemeal you know verse by verse perhaps a section by section uh, slowly slowly over a span of 23 years that was the time frame uh of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's prophethood with during the whole duration of his prophethood he was receiving this revelation the revelation of the holy quran and we know for example the very first revelation uh ikra bismi rabbik allazi khalaq that verse of the quran comes closer to the end it's in the 96th chapter of the holy quran in surah alaq mm-hmm. that is towards the end of the holy quran even so the, though it was the first even though it's the very first verse which was being revealed so not only for the compilation of the holy quran was the were the words of the quran revealed but also the placement of the uh, of those verses within the holy quran where they are going to come that was also part of the revelation the so an- he was told by god almighty that right. this revelation belongs to this chapter and it's this verse exactly so a specific verse for a specific you know something that happened in his life or something that happened in the life of his companions mm-hmm. that required that instruction or that teaching from god the almighty mm-hmm. and then even where that should be placed within uh the the whole framework of the quran where it should come was also revealed to him from very early on we know uh from the hadith and from the from the history that the quran was being written down right away whether it was on on hide or on bone or on parchments of paper if they could find it but very early on there were qatib bihi there were those who were assigned by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be the writers to be the writers of that revelation for example 
حضرت ابو بکر حضرت عثمان حضرت علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ آل آف دیز کمپینینس دے ور نا دے ور ہز کلوزیسٹ کمپینینس ایز ویل ایز بینگ امنگس دی رائٹرز آف دا ہولی قرآن سو دا ہولی پروفیس ہم سیلف دے نو ہر ریڈ اینڈ رائٹ رائٹ بٹ ادر کمپینینس ہو نیو دے ور کمیشن ٹو ڈو سو دے ور کمیشن ایز سون ایز دا ریولیشن واز کمنگ دے ور اینڈ وی نو دس بیکاز فار ایگزامپل یو نو حضرت عثمان رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ At the time of his martyrdom, during his Khilafat, mm-hmm. uh, we know he was reciting the Holy Quran. Yeah. And uh, in, in there it is stated that when his attacker attacked him, when he was being martyred, when he attacked him, he put up his right hand to you know, stop the attack mm-hmm. and his fingers were cut. And then Hazrat Usman ta'ala, who at that moment told his attacker that you have just cut that hand, which was the very first one, to write the verses of the Holy Quran. And Hazrat Usman, رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ, of course, was amongst the very first companions of the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم. So this is how we know that from very early on, it was being written down, it was being compiled, it was being told to them where to put those verses. And all of this was being done within the, during the lifetime, during the prophethood of the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم. And again, uh, you know, this is uh, a very important point to understand that though the Holy Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم himself didn't know how to read and write, many of his companions did, did. knew how to read and write. And as you mentioned, that the specific order, it was also being revealed along with the revelation. that God Almighty was telling him where this verse uh, is to go, in which chapter, after which verse, uh, all of that. Not just that, if you take, for example, during Ramadan, mm-hmm. when uh, the angel Gabriel would come and review the whole of the Quran that was revealed up until that moment. So it was revealed, you know, in a span of 23 years. That means in those 23 years, some verses were revealed 23 times because mm-hmm. the angel Gabriel is coming and reviewing and revealing those verses again. Okay. Right? So even the order, the exact verses, once they had been revealed within that year, how much ever had been revealed was reviewed again. Mm-hmm. So we can say at least, because in, in the last year of his life, the Holy Prophet so so was revealed it twice. Angel Gabriel reviewed the whole of the okay. Quran in the month of Ramadan twice as a way to denote that now the Quranic revelation is coming to an end. So we can say at least... twice each verse had oh, been revealed. Yeah. Uh, Jazakallah, Hanan sahab, for this explanation. Uh, Asif sahab, uh, now we have understood uh, what the Holy Quran is, and as you mentioned, is the verbatim revelation of God Almighty. And Hanan sahab explained to us that though the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi himself didn't know how to read and write, uh, there were other companions who were uh, assisting with the writing of the Holy Quran, and it was being written down uh, at the same time. Now, when we think about the Holy Quran as a book, you know, what is the purpose of the Holy Quran? Because essentially whatever we have, you know, at home all of us have different books. You know, we have a purpose in mind when we buy a book. So somebody who's picking up the Holy Quran, or if we're telling somebody to pick up the Holy Quran, what interest would they have in, you know, having that or picking up the Holy Quran and reading it? So the purpose of the Holy Quran is essentially the purpose of religion. The purpose of your religion is for you to find your creator and to make a strong connection with your creator. Mm-hmm. And that is what the Holy Quran facilitates, actually. You know, in, in essence, the Holy Quran, without it, you cannot reach that stage of certainty in regards to the existence of God. As a Muslim of the Layyid Islam, he explains sin as a certainty. Mm-hmm. And he likens it to iron. And he states that iron can only be broken with iron. You can't use another flimsy material to, and attempt to break iron with it. So how can you possibly think that you can stay away from sin and go about finding your creator on the notion that a creator should exist? Mm-hmm. That's, the fir- that, that, that's the first statement which the Muslim Allah makes. So what we understand from this is that the Holy Quran is that book which takes you to that level of certainty and shows you that Allah Ta'ala truly does exist. He actually is there. And with that level of certainty, you can now eschew sin. Mm-hmm. So that's essentially the purpose of the Holy Quran. Uh, basically the purpose now is to go and find Allah Ta'ala and the Holy Quran facilitates that and proves the existence of God. Yeah, and I think this, uh, uh, this is a very, uh, again, uh, important question to understand that our purpose has been uh, you know, defined by God Almighty since He created us. Mm. And that purpose is to worship God Almighty. Yes. And the Holy Quran, as you mentioned, you know, uh, tells us how we can find God and how we can have that relationship with God Almighty. Uh, 
And also, if we keep that in mind, the uh, Holy Quran, uh, how it was compiled, uh, as you were talking about it earlier, uh, one question arises that, you know, if the purpose is to have a relationship with God Almighty, you know, I want to do it as fast as possible, right? And there are many commandments in the Holy Quran. But we see, as you just mentioned, that they weren't all revealed at once. So if the purpose is for me to have, through the Holy Quran, a communion, a relationship with God Almighty, so why did it take 23 years? I mean, 23 years is a long time, if we think about it. So why wasn't it all <coughs> revealed at once? It wasn't revealed of the promised Messiah, in the essence of Islam. Actually, he has given the answer to this very question, why the Holy Quran was not revealed altogether at once. And he gives the answer that it was one reason is for the sake of the satisfaction of the heart of the Holy Prophet You see, had it been revealed all at once, that was the end of the communion with God? Yeah. Of course not. It was revealed so that throughout his prophethood, throughout the, his day-to-day -day life, every day, he is having that connection with God the Almighty, that communion with God the Almighty, despite all the trials and the tribulations and all the forces which are against him. The satisfaction that Allah Ta'ala is providing him with that continuous connection, with that continuous communion with him, is, uh, is something that only the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could understand. Mm -hmm. At that moment of time when, you know, he needs God to be there. Everything is against him and Allah Ta'ala is saying, no, you are on the right path and you are, you are taking these people to the right path. Mm -hmm. So it's for his own satisfaction. The other reason is that had it been revealed all together at once, then the difficulty in uh, administering those uh, teachings, the difficulty in following those teachings for his followers it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Hazrat Aisha Razila Talanha, she gives the example that had the teachings of, um, uh, against alcohol and had the teachings against fornication. If, these were, had, if, if they had been given all together all at once, then many people, they would not have been able to follow those teachings. They would not have been able to accept Islam a, as such. So these teachings came slowly, slowly, and it created the, the society in a way that they are able to follow those teachings. They are able to get to the position that they, are, uh, they can follow those teachings that Allah Ta'ala is, is, so is giving. So essentially they were first, they were being conditioned exactly. through the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and once a certain, they had reached a certain level, the teachings were being revealed according to that level they had advanced. Uh, and I think we'll continue with this topic, uh, with the same question. Uh, it's time for a quick break. Uh, please stay with us. Uh, we'll be back after this short break. I call to Allah to witness that the Holy Qur'an is a rare pearl. Its outside is light, and its inside is light, and its above is light, and its below is light. And there is light in every word of it. It is a spiritual garden whose clustered fruits are within easy reach, and through which streams flow. Every fruit of good fortune is found in it, and every torch is lit from it. Its light has penetrated to my heart, and I could not have acquired it by any other means. And Allah is my witness that if there had been no Qur'an, I would have found no delight in life. I find it that its beauty exceeds that of a hundred thousand Josephs. I incline towards it with a great inclination and drink it into my heart. It has nurtured me as an embryo is nurtured and it has a wonderful effect on my heart. My self is lost in its beauty. It has been disclosed to me in a vision that the garden of holiness is irrigated by the water of the Holy Quran, which is a surging ocean of the water of life. He who drinks from it comes to life. Indeed, he brings others to life. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back. Um, just before the break, we were talking about the Holy Quran being revealed in 23 years and why it wasn't revealed at once. So, Hanan Sab, let's continue with that. That you know, you were explaining uh, that how certain uh, commandments had they been revealed right in the beginning, it would have been extremely difficult for certain people 
uh, to accept those commandments and enter the fold of Islam. You can take it as an example of an infant. You know, early on the infant starts by taking very small dosages of, of, its, of its meals, of its uh, milk, of its food. And slowly, slowly as it grows and it, it progresses and it's able now to digest more, then it starts to up in its intake. Mm -hmm. The same goes here that the initial dosage, you can say, of the Holy Quran, because the society is now being prepared. It's being prepared for the final law, for the Holy Quran, so that the societies which are going to come after this, which are going to be the children of these society, they are going to have the perfect framework uh, to follow these teachings and to, to accept these teachings and to create that society. So this is why in the very beginning, it was simple, you know, s uh, smaller examples, not just going all out together. For example, even the veil, it was revealed in, in Medina. It was revealed much later on. It wasn't, you're not coming into society and completely uh, changing all of the rules and all of the laws because that would create a chaos and that would create even, uh, already the Holy Prophet wasallam was facing so much of a, of a backlash. Mm -hmm. I think another good example of this is also um, the teachings in regards to slavery. Yeah. Right. You know, um, I, I'm actually in regards to the teachings of, of slavery, slavery wasn't abolished all at once yeah. in the religion of Islam. If we if we look, if we study the the history of the the religion of Islam, actually what we see is that initially the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught kindness and love and compassion towards slaves, mm -hmm. right, and gave them a, a an elevated status in society compared to where they were before. And then another way, another um, uh, teaching of the Holy Quran is that certain punishments were to free your slaves. If you committed a certain sin, you were told to free your slaves. Yeah. Right? So, and, then, and then eventually down the road, slavery was completely abolished. Yeah. Right? So now, so again, we see a gradual, a gradual increase or an, a, gradual, a gradual progression towards an end first, goal. First they had mm. to be seen as human beings yes. before they could even be mm. seen as equal human beings in yeah, the sight of God. I think God. this mm. is a, a prime example mm. of the uh, reason why the Holy Quran or the teachings of the Holy Quran were revealed slowly, mm. slowly. And I mean if we com compare this example of slavery against uh, what happened in America, mm. we still see the ripple effects of that. Yeah. That though slavery yeah, you was... See, you uh, see it today as well, and not only with slavery, you see that you see it with alcohol as well. You know, the prohibition of alcohol that occurred in the United States was an epic failure. Yeah. If you actually study the background of it, yeah. it was a complete failure and it had to be reinstated. Exactly. And actually, it's actually only the religion of Islam which, has, which can successfully actually boast this, right. that it actually pro prohibited alcoholism yeah. or the use of alcohol. Right. And, and exactly, the, Hanansa, the point you were mentioning, that the society slowly, slowly, it was brought to this level that when the commandment came for the prohibition of alcohol, it happened right away. Yeah. You know, with those companions, it is mentioned that they were sitting down and they were drinking actually at that time. And somebody came and said, the Holy Prophet ﷺ has mentioned that he has received a command, commandment regarding this. And uh, some companions said, okay, let us go verify. And the other companions, they're like, no, first we break these barrels and then we will go verify. So even from that point of view, I mean, when we think about it, just this one injunction, then imagine them sitting down drinking, but they were still able to have, through the Holy Prophet ﷺ, that change in themselves, that even in that state, they're say, able to say that, okay, first we must uh, obey the Holy Prophet ﷺ, uh, and then, you know, we'll continue with this. So, and there are so many different examples. Uh, the Prophet Messiah, ﷺ, he, he talks about this even in his book, uh, Essence, uh, The Philosophy of the Teachings of Islam. It's also mentioned in Essence of Islam, that this was the purpose of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, and this is the purpose of Islam, that it, teaches, it takes you step by step from a lower stage to a higher stage to a higher stage until you reach that final stage, you know, nafsa mutmainna, where now you're content, you're happy, uh, and you have a living communion, you have a living relationship uh, with God Almighty. Asr Sahib, in the beginning, when we spoke about the Holy Quran, um, we touched about upon this, that the Holy Quran is the revealed word of God, 100% yes. verbatim. And we say that the other religions, uh, whether they be inspiration, thoughts, whatever that is, uh, and it has changed over time. So when we think about the Holy Quran, it's been 1400 years, right? Yes. Uh, so uh, when somebody thinks from that point of view, what can we say that is it still in its original format, whatever was revealed to the Holy Prophet ﷺ, and as Hanan Sahib explained uh, how it was compiled, is it still in that original format or has it been changed, has it been corrupted as well? Well, the Holy Quran is still in its complete, original, pristine, pristine format. Now, 
the question arises, could it have been interpolated in the time of the Holy Prophet ﷺ? That's an impossibility because the Prophet ﷺ was there and present in society. So if anything did occur, the changes would have been made. Mm -hmm. Now the question arises, after the death of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, is it possible for it to have changed? Now this is an impossibility because we see that, we see that there were multiple copies of the Holy Quran which were written out by hand. Mm -hmm. Now not only this, the Muslims were reciting the Holy Quran five times a day. As the Muslim of the Salaam explains that multiple tafasir were written in regards to the Holy Quran. Not only this, Muslim societies and, uh, and Muslim, uh, Muslim empires actually instated the Holy Quran and its teachings. Mm -hmm. So to think that the Holy Quran could have been interpolated, that's just wrong. It's just yeah, completely incorrect. I think, uh, yes. also, in fact, mm -hmm. even during the lifetime of the Holy Prophet Salaam, we find in the Hadith that there, his companions, many of them, they had already began memorizing. Right. Yeah. Yes. They had begun, there were 70 Hufas, for example, in his lifetime, uh, which were sent to uh, a far-off tribe to teach them mm -hmm. Islam. For that very purpose, they were sent out. So they were the Hufas. They were the ones who had memorized the, all of the Holy Quran, whatever was revealed up until that moment. And it, it reminds me of an incident that once Hazrat Umar was, was offering his Salat behind an Imam and that Imam happened to recite a verse of the Quran differently from the way he had, 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 had it memorized or had, had, had it known. And right away he took him to the court of the Holy Prophet وسلم, to decide that matter, which one of us is correct and which one is, of us is incorrect. Mm -hmm. So there were all the, of these uh, fail-safes that were set in motion, that were there, so that there were, could not be any interpolation in the Quran. Yeah, and I think even uh, if I remember correctly, I think a few months ago or maybe last year, uh, there was also a finding uh, in Britain in one of the museums, they found an old uh, scroll and it had certain words and uh, you know, it was really old, but it had same writing of the Holy Quran which is found today. So as you mentioned, there were many different fail-safes and the Promised Messiah Islam, he mentions that the Holy Quran is the only scriptures in which we find this promise of God. Where Allah Ta'ala says that, Inna na zikra, that you know Allah Ta'ala says, I have sent down this uh, exhortation, this remembrance, uh, this Holy Quran, and I'm also going to protect it. So this promise of God for the protection of the Holy Quran is also only found within the Holy Quran. No other scripture has this promise of God. Uh, so we see that it is the same book that was revealed to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu It was compiled uh, in his lifetime. It was written down. Uh, and uh, by the grace of God Almighty, we have that same book today uh, in its perfect and uh, pristine form. But Anansab, keeping that in mind, we see this cycle that, you know, there are so many religions in the world, right? And over the course of our history, uh, the history of mankind, there have been so many religions, one after the other, one after the other. So keeping that in mind, the Holy Quran or the religion of Islam, um, should we say that this is the final law, the Holy Quran, the religion of Islam is the last religion and the word of God revealed to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu is the last word of God or can another law come after the Holy Quran? No, so as, as you just said that Allah, he says in the Quran that I have sent down this exhortation, I will be its protector and we see that protection from the day of its inception to now. Mm -hmm. and amongst the various ways in which Allah Ta'ala has done that uh, to show that this is the last law and that this is the final Sharia for the whole of the world he, uh, besides all the different ways of protecting the, the, the word of it but also the teachings of it because you know many people can take a different interpretation of the same words yeah. this is why we have so many different sects and so many uh, people within the same you know uh, Muslim Ummah following different things but the fact that Allah Ta'ala through his appointed reformers, through his appointed people, those who come in his name and say that we have received this revelation from God the Almighty and this is the meaning of this verse. These are the, this is the meaning of these teachings. So as Masimo de la Islam, he has also explained that from the, from the very beginning, of course, we have the Quran in its uh, pristine form, mm -hmm. but also its teachings have been protected by all of those mujaddideen, by all of those uh, you know, the friends of Allah who have come and have done that service for its protection, for its pristine teachings. I think, to, uh, and just to add on to that, Allah Ta'ala Himself states in the Holy Quran, Al-Yawma akmatu lakum deenakum wa atmantu alaykum ni'madi wa raditu lakum al-Islam adina, which means Allah Ta'ala has completed the, the religion which is the religion of Islam, which means that if it's completed, then what's the need for another religion? The question arises that, okay, if Allah Ta'ala were to send another religion, another book, another teaching, 
What was the need for it? Does the Holy Quran not cover those needs? The Holy Quran has clearly stated that every single need is covered mm -hmm. in the teachings of the Holy Quran. Allah Ta'ala has stated this. So there's no need for another law. And Zakala Hanan Sahib and uh, Asif Sahib for joining us today. We were speaking about the Holy Quran. Uh, and as you just heard that the Holy Quran is unique in the sense that there are two promises of God Almighty in the Holy Quran. One, which we just discussed that God has mentioned, I have sent down this book and I am going to safeguard this book. And second one, as you just heard, that Allah Ta'ala says that this is a perfect book and I have completed my favor upon you. Uh, so with both of these statements and these uh, promises of God Almighty, Holy Quran is the final word of God. It is the last law which has been revealed to mankind for our salvation. We have been discussing different topics from the series Essence of Islam. The Promised Messiah Islam, has written extensively regarding the Holy Quran. And the Promised Messiah Islam, has mentioned that had this book been revealed to earlier ummahs, earlier religions, they would not have gone astray. They would not have deviated from the right path. Uh, we encourage our readers, whatever topic you're interested in, whichever te teaching is of Islam, uh, you do not understand, pick up one volume of Essence of Islam pick out any topic and read a few pages so that you can better understand the teachings of Islam so you can understand the essence of Islam. Zakala for joining us today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah for listeners and viewers. Um, I hope you have been enjoying the uh, essence of the beauty of the teaching of the Holy Quran. Uh, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have our guest in studio, Mirza Kawim Saab. Mirza Kawim has been in Masterton, I think it's almost a year now, not quite, but it's getting close. But within that time frame, Kawim has made some significant process in terms of um, his work-wise, his study-wise with his family. So, Assalamualaikum Kawim, how are you today? Waalaikum salam, I'm fine, thank you. So, thank you for joining me in the studio today. Can I ask some really touching questions? How has the progress been from the time you've settled in Marston? Some high level stuff from you, please. It's really, really good. I've completed my studies here in Masterton. Like, I'm here probably eight months and I've completed my business studies here and then I have got my job in Warrapa College as a bilingual tutor and a teacher aid and I'm happy to do that I'm really happy and then I recently got a casual job as a cross culture worker in a Red Cross and that's a really awesome job I love it Thank you so much, Kawim. So this has been a classic example of how successful our resettlement program has been with the Red Cross, with MBIE, with New Zealand government. And look, I acknowledge the people of the Wararapa who are giving people like Kawim an opportunity to add value to New Zealand economy and also to the um, people of uh, uh, Wararapa region. So Kawim, can I just touch on you know your bilingual activity at school? So so can you tell me what does your work or what does it entail just briefly why do you enjoy so much actually that's a really awesome job and you have to help the students in I have I used to help in any subject because I've studied all those subjects so I can help them and they need a lot of help because of the language barrier I used to help them in their different mm. language language and to try interpret them and to tell them this is going on in the subject and you have to do this and that so that's the things and the thing is that that the peoples here in Masterton and the out here OA, they are really really helpful they ca take your hands and they ask you to come with up with us fantastic so that's that's your bilingual um, you know job so touch on the refugee one as well your cross-cultural worker because I feel this is where you are actually saving humanity and when you're saving humanity you're fulfilling one of the um, uh, commandments of God Almighty so can you touch on that please for me yes in a cross culture worker I used to help like as you mentioned humanity is uh, most probably and you're working as an interpreter and advocacy for the people with the stakeholders and wherever they stuck like in business uh, in their police staff or in their vtnz or any like uh, medical issues they are stuck with the language or something or advocacy they need something they want the community to know that so 
that place my role came over okay look jazakallah uh, kawim saab this is absolutely amazing to hear that a former refugee now coming from pakistan settled in malaysia gone through the hardship now he's come to new zealand he's living in uh, beautiful wararapa for the past 8 months he has transformed himself in terms of getting that education under his belt with the business study they said mashallah very great to hear kawim and then he is now adding value to the people of new zealand he is now helping students um who are struggling at school with their language with their education he is becoming that key or taking the key um, lead role in helping them in that aspect and it's so pleasing to even hear he is helping with his second job as a cross cultural worker where uh, he is helping in terms of um, you know uh, like he mentioned with your vehicle testing station with the licensing with the police um with advo- advocacy um with you with work and income you know how pleasing is this he is absolutely fulfilling the whole motivation desire of this whole settlement program and and the utmost it that really is striking that he is saving mankind saving humanity and that is the most pleasing thing in the sight of god almighty with that note we will come back to kawim um we'll take a little uh, break in between where we will take a uh, play a beautiful poem that's really um praising um in the words of god the holy quran and it's in urdu you will see some english translation coming through on that Jamalu Hussain Qur'anur Jaan Har Musalma Hai Kamar Hai Chand Auron Ka Hamara chand Qur'an hai Kamar hai chand auron ka Hamara chand Qur'an hai nazir us ki nahi jamti nazar mein fikr kar dekha nazir us ki فکر کر دیکھا بھلا کیوں کر نہ ہو یکتا کلام میں پاک رحمان ہے بھلا کیوں کر نہ ہو یکتا کلام میں پاک رحمان ہے بہار جا اس کی ہر عبارت میں بہار جاگدا پیدا ہے اس کی ہر عبارت میں 
नवो चमन में है न उस साको बुसता है नवो खूबी चमन में है न उस साको बुसता है सानी नहीं हर गिज अगर लोलू अम्मा है वगै लाले बदफ शां है अगर गए लाले बदखशा है खुदा के कौन से कौन बश क्यों कर कौन से कौन बश क्यों कर बराबर हो वहा कुदरत यहां दरमानगी फर के वहा कुदरत यहां दरमानगी पर के नुमाया है कमल है चांद औरों का हमारा चांद कुर It's our job to ensure you get the right care for your individual needs. Since Thank you to our listeners and viewers. That was the beautiful poem uh, that you have heard about the Holy Quran. I'm just coming back to Mirza Kawim. Look, we are almost to the end of our program today. So we've got another uh, five to seven minutes left. So Kawim, you've talked about uh, the... Um, uh, school you have talked about red cross i think <clears throat> it's also good to see uh, what's your aspiration for the future i think it's a good thing to discuss i think everybody's motivated so as a former <coughs> refugee now uh, maybe you could um, share something along the lines of where you would like to see yourself in the next five years if you have not thought about it it's okay but if you're thinking about it something you can share like I want to be a very stable person yes just like everyone do and maybe like a well respected in the community yeah person in the community like i have worked in youth council i've given some interviews in council <coughs> i've <coughs> given an interview with the human library and i have done these things so that's are not a long term goals i didn't decide it yet but it will just everyone thinks like same need a good future <coughs> sorry i'm having a bit of a cough today <coughs> so what's your dream job maybe a question can i ask you dream job <coughs> if you ask me honestly there's i don't like to do a job i want to be a businessman i like it i like it it's a great answer i think i think that's a great answer so you have got a business mind which is really awesome and really 
<laughs> we'll answer. I'm <coughs> still working on it. That's good. And I pray that you'll <coughs> find something in the future. <coughs> Thank you, Kawim. <coughs> Sorry, I've just got a cough coming through now. I do apologize for this. <coughs> Kawim, can you give us some <coughs> also exciting things you guys do in the youth space? <coughs> if that's anything you want to highlight. Mm. Actually, I've done very short time in youth council and I have left it because I'm not <coughs> at that age. Like youth council is from six teenage to like 24 and I was 25 I realized that and then my brothers joined there so I just drop it down and so that's why I've not done a lot of things in uh, youth council yeah but as a Red Cross volunteer also I have trained as a volunteer and I have done a first aid course with the Red Cross also so I have that kind of now that's great stuff. I mean at least uh, you know you still have a knowledge and understanding because the reason why I use the youth youth <clears throat> because in our Ahmadiyya Muslim community you are part of the youth group yep. which is Qudamul Ahmadiyya so they do have a lot of program that you guys are allude, alluding uh, to in the future that has a lot of stuff you do that adds value to the community which is great so, <clears throat> so that was one of the reasons I asked the question so actually we're coming to the end of the program <clears throat> there's nothing further i have uh, anything in light of the holy quran that i could share with you but we will continue this conversation <clears throat> i do have a little bit of update around the masters in refugee um, settlement i think what's happening now is you will find <clears throat> that there has been more families that are assigned to come to Masterton. So again i really really am thankful to the people of uh, Aotearoa, New Zealand, who are giving the opportunity uh, to the refugees to come to New Zealand, to this beautiful country. I'm ever so thankful to Red Cross. I'm ever so thankful to MBIA ministry. Um, I'm also thankful to our members who diligently work hard to make life easy for our um, members. Thank you, Kawi. <coughs> So the whole idea of uh, the refugees is we want to give them a better life. We want to give them a better living. They have gone through a lot of hardship in Pakistan. They are persecuted. They are not given the livelihood where New Zealand has taken them in the open arms to give them that lifestyle. Um, there has been, you know, some real good progress happening. Um, I am also thankful to the people like of Stella Lennox, Michael Wilson from AROFM, the council, who are actively involved with us to make, you know, the lives easy for uh, for the people of um, of the refugee community. I don't want to use the word refugee community now. They are now the former refugee because they are proudly New Zealanders now where they are adding value to the country than some members are, which is really pleasing to see. So back of that, um, if you do have any questions or concerns regarding today's program, please feel free to call us on 0800 letter Y Islam. You can email us on info at ahmedia.org.nz or you can contact me directly. I'm the local president here, Tashrik Hanif. You can call me on 027-5365-654. Um, at the moment, we are absolutely witnessing some atrocities that are happening between Israel and uh, Palestine. I don't want to get into the details of it, but here we are seeing some you know, civilians, some people who are actually being the victim of a war, which we want to probably avoid in the future. So I humbly pray to all the people of Wairarapa, we get down on our knees, we pray for this war to stop ASAP. God be with us, and we pray that this comes to an very, very quickly. With that note, thank you, Kawim, for joining me in the studios today. Um, again, as I said, any question and concern, please feel free to reach out to us. With that, uh, please have a lovely and a blessed weekend. May Almighty Allah Ta'ala be with you. Ka kite ano. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you.